In this video and lecture we will study the basic principle of the Coombs test, direct Coombs test, and indirect Coombs test. To understand the Coombs test we should have knowledge of two terms beforehand. First, non-agglutinating antibodies. And second, anti-immunoglobulin antibodies. We have studied agglutination reactions. We know that agglutination is a consequence of aggregation of particulate antigens by specific antibodies. These antibodies cross-link or bridge the particulate antigens and result in their visible clumping. The antibodies which result in the agglutination are known as agglutinating antibodies. Always keep in mind that these antibodies bind directly to the antigen, cross-link them, and result in agglutination. Such agglutination reactions forms the basic principle of routine blood typing. Now there are other antibodies that do bind to their specific antigens. But they do not cause agglutination. Such antibodies are known as non-agglutinating antibodies. One reason for this non-agglutination is that the epitopes to which these antibodies bind are spaced at larger distances. And therefore, these antibodies are not able to cross-link them. Because of this these non-agglutinating antibodies are difficult to detect in the lab. One very important example of non-agglutinating antibody is anti-RH or anti-DE antibodies. Recall that these antibodies belong to IgG class. Anti-RH antibodies bind to the RH antigen on RBCs, but they do not agglutinate them in vitro. Detection of non-agglutinating antibody in lab is made possible by using a second antibody. This second antibody is specific for the FC regions of non-agglutinating antibodies. Let's understand this by illustration. Suppose these are antigens to which non-agglutinating antibodies are bound. Now we add second antibody which has binding site for the FC region of non-agglutinating antibodies. These second antibodies will bind to the non-agglutinating antibodies and bridge the gap between them. As a result, agglutination will result which will confirm the presence of non-agglutinating antibodies. So, the second antibody is targeted against the first one that is non-agglutinating antibody. These antibodies are known as anti-immunoglobulin antibodies, abbreviated as anti-IG antibodies. This is because these are antibodies against antibodies. Coombs test in immunology is used to determine the presence of antibodies in the serum of a patient. Usually these antibodies are blood type antibodies. This test uses anti-immunoglobulin antibodies to detect antibodies in the serum of a patient. These anti-immunoglobulin antibodies are also known as Coombs reagent. It is named for Robin Coombs who first developed anti-immunoglobulin antibodies. This test is also known as anti-globulin test. Coombs test is of two main types. First type is known as direct Coombs test or direct anti-globulin test. And second one is known as indirect Coombs test or indirect anti-globulin test. We will illustrate how these tests are used for diagnosis and prevention of hemolytic disease of the newborn. Direct Coombs test or anti-globulin test. This test is used for diagnosis of hemolytic disease of the newborn. It detects the anti-RH antibodies that have already bound to fetal RBCs. Blood sample is obtained from the fetus. And fetal RBCs are washed. This is done to remove any unbound and non-specifically bound antibodies. In the next step, 
anti-immunoglobulin antibodies, which are targeted against the FC region of anti-RH antibodies are added. These anti-IG antibodies agglutinate any fetal RBCs to which anti-RH antibodies are already bound. The visible agglutination confirms the presence of anti-RH antibodies. This test is called direct Coombs test because it directly detects the target antibody that coats red blood cells. Indirect Coombs test or indirect antiglobulin test. This test has application in the prevention of hemolytic disease of the newborn. It detects anti-RH antibodies in the mother's serum. In this test, first mother's serum is taken. Mother's serum will contain anti-RH antibodies if she has been sensitized. We also need blood from a RH positive donor. Mother's serum is incubated with RH positive RBCs. These RBCs have RH antigens on their surface. If mother's serum contain anti-RH antibodies, they will bind to these RH-positive RBCs. In the next step, these RBCs are washed to remove all unbound or free antibodies. Now, Coombs reagent or anti-immunoglobulin antibodies are added. They will bind to the FC region of maternal anti-RH antibodies and result in agglutination. This test is called indirect Coombs test because addition of RBCs is required so that anti-RH antibodies can bind to them.